Hey guys, my name is Mike, and today I want to talk about setting yourself up for success at the beginning of a comic book or illustration coloring project. As an example, I'm going to use one page of a Lovecraftian horror story, a one-shot by C.E. Zacherl. You can see his website here, cezacherl.com. He's a horror and sci-fi artist that has a really iconic uh, pen and micron, like micron pen style. I met him at Louisville Supercon, where we were we were both exhibiting and we got to talking and he's got this cool creator owned project and I offered to color it for him. And you can see all his, his links here, follow him on Instagram. He's got a Patreon, super nice gentleman, a uh, great guy and a great artist. So I am coloring his one shot here. So this was the first page and I'm just going to talk through so my decision making process kind of why I did the things that I did um, and and how to go about serving the art now, this is a very unusual uh, piece I'm used to doing you know I do superhero stuff and pop art and um, I, I've never I've never really been a horror artist per se and I've certainly never uh, colored a story as unusual looking as this I think that when you think of comic books, uh, first of all, this is hand lettered. So um, that's the the immediate thing that jumped out to me. I'm no. going to get a layer underneath here. And I'm going to set this to multiply just so I can paint underneath it to uh, show you some examples of things. So right when I get a first page, and I know I'm, and the first thing you want to do is probably do a test page just so you can use as a template. So that's what I did here. And I've got a finished document that I'll show you. So the first thing that jumps out at me is this kind of looks like a like a illuminated manuscript, like the Gutenberg Bible or something like that. And what, what followed that, I'm thinking of sort of the children's books in the 1800s, 1900s, like maybe old German folklore that kind of imitated that style. Um, and that got me thinking that this may not be apparent to some people. You know, I'm a, I'm a painter, a professional painter, and so I'm obsessed with art history. I'm obsessed with whatever artist, every time I look at a work and I don't know how somebody did something, I want to take that apart to figure out how I can do it, to put it in my toolbox. But if you're just a digital artist, that might not occur to you. It might not seem like it has value. But trust me, having a knowledge, you don't have to like art history. You don't have to appreciate the works of Vermeer or Van Gogh or, uh, you know, whoever. But, uh, or Malevich, but what you do need to do is have a visual library in your head. Like, what does an illuminated manuscript look like? Because that gave me the idea of giving this whole page texture. Because think about it. I'm not going to be able to render this in a traditional way. It's going to have to be very, very minimal. Um, because first of all, we have these huge uh, letterboxed areas here. Uh, that are ob that are obviously going to need to be very light underneath. I just have kind of like an airbrush tool here. But we also have tons of ink on this page. And because there's tons of in ink on this page, right out of the gate, I know I'm going to have to set a layer on top and clip it down so that I can color the actual inks. Now, if you're not familiar with... Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the, the technical stuff here. There's a million videos out there on how to set up your layers, and you can learn how to do everything you need to know how to do comic book coloring in a matter of a few hours, even if you don't know how to use Photoshop, or in this case, Manga Studio. But that's like, I can learn how to mix linseed oil and, and pigment to make oil paint uh, in a few hours. Uh, maybe I won't master it, but I can learn all the basics to get the paints that I need. But that doesn't make me a painter. You know, these, <laughs> this is one of those things easy to do, very difficult to master. And so if I have this layer set up right out of the gate, then I know that I can push this stuff or, well, primarily things like this into the background very easily because with all that ink on the page, it's going to be very, very difficult to do without those line holds. And you want that, you, you're going to want to incorporate or I'm going to want to incorporate that stuff right out of the gate. So that was the first thing that I did, the first idea that I had. And it doesn't mean that that's going to work, but that's, you know, just I'm just brewing how I'm going to approach this thing. I'm not just going to start whacking paint underneath it. Uh, the next thing that's unusual about this page and every 
every artist's style is different. You know, even if they're trying to imitate uh, Jack Kirby or Jim Lee, it's there's still going to be something about it that you have to you have to think. Don't just don't just start throwing digital pixels underneath this stuff. Uh, we've got this border, this very ornate, creepy border, and I know that rendering this out, flatting out each piece, and rendering it out is not going to give me the best result. With all this ink on the page, in my head, I, I know that I'm going to have to be minimal. How uh, Maybe how Matt Hollingsworth dealt with Sean Gordon Murphy's art in uh, Batman White Knight. That was just the most popular example I could think of. There's one to two, there's two to maybe three colors per page. It's super minimal because Sean Gordon Murphy puts a lot of ink on the page. There's a lot of dry brush. There's a lot of little pixels there. And that's the only thing that I could think to compare this to. So if I know there's going to be a ton of ink on the page and I know that I can line hold to kind of give myself some depth and some room to breathe and really give a light, a, a directionality to the light, then what follows is just really soft, brushy strokes to kind of give the illusion of muddy, dirty, horror light. You know, those those poopy yellows and those very hollow, empty blues and a lot of grays and maybe little pops of color here and there where you want to draw the eye. Because this isn't, at least this first page, it's not panels. And it's going to be, it's already set up like a page. So you don't have to use color really to direct anything because you're going to very, you could very easily tell as long as I don't mess that up, you can very easily tell where you have to read. You know, the eye is going to naturally flow right down the page. Um, and as the panels, because there become more panels and it gets more complicated, you're, you'll have to think more about that. But I, I, in, in, that, in that sense, this, this page is easy. I don't have to think about where the eye is going to go. So uh, let me show you what I, what I came up with. I'm going to shut this stuff off um, and I'm going to turn this on. Now there's only two colors on this page. There's yellow and then there's sort of a very desaturated uh, lighter blue-green. Um, blue that, it, it's still a very blue color but it's pushed more towards green than it is towards purple. And I didn't flat this out at all. And there are some very, very gentle line holds all over the place. And maybe this is a little bright. I'd have to see how this uh, um, how this came out, but, but really what I was trying to do here is leave that original illustration intact, make it as readable as possible, and maybe just render up the border a little bit. You know, this is, it, it's very difficult sometimes to show restraint. The more skills you have, the more careful you have to be about ruining things. Remember that as you get better, that if you can, you know, I could go out in the garage and I could create a a 60, 80, 100 inch, perfectly photographic canvas, right? Whether it was a landscape or, or whatever, because I've worked so hard at trying to be good at painting. When, and that's not great for touching other people's work, right? And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the, the more, the bigger that toolbox gets, the more uh, editing you have to do about which of those tools you use. Right? I screw this up all the time. It's something I constantly, uh, because I'm always trying to improve and uh, I can get showy offy at times, and that's very bad. So um, learn from my mistakes and just pull it back. Do what the art needs. And in this case, the art needed something very, very minimal. And I'm pretty happy with this page. Um, and, of, and of course, the artist could have told me, you know, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I hate it. Um, but that's not what he said. Uh, he was absolutely ecstatic. He thought it was the coolest thing. He was like, this is what I was looking for kind of thing. And uh, and that's why you want to collaborate with people because I'm perfectly capable of drawing my own comic or whatever. But go out there and even it, whether it's for free, whether it's for fun, as often as your schedule allows, come together and try and make things with other people if only for the experience of doing it, because you will broaden your horizons. Um, you know, selling art in general is about a lot more about the relationships between people 
than it is about being the greatest artist ever or being able to produce the most detailed work or whatever. Um, there are people who are so singularly talented that uh, they almost they almost have to be evil to not have success. But for the rest of us, like me, who, you know, we have some skills and we're always working to get better. I find that I have the most success when I just connect with people. And so that's why I'm making it a priority this year to really go out and make stuff with other people. Because in the last few years, I've made so much stuff by myself and I don't, I'm not really a part of any art community. So uh, I hope that I've offered you some insight into the process of, of working with someone else and for someone else and trying to, I mean, I know this was only like a 10 minute video, but just trying to set yourself up for success with a project by really focusing on uh, and thinking about the details on a page or an illustration or whatever it is and just do what the art tells you to do not everything that you can do um, you know I've, I've really handicapped myself that way in the past where it's like I have to show up like I'm gonna send you a test page so like I gotta throw everything I can do at it and uh, I mean to be honest this is like if I take the paper texture away this is like a round brush and then like a couple textured pencils and a blender like you you could just open up manga studio and with no custom brushes whatsoever get this result or even or photoshop or whatever a round brush in photoshop would is all you would need to do this um and that's the case for a lot of stuff now granted with some of the little textures that are added you know a couple textured brushes could help but don't don't overthink your setup and i say that and i've got like 700 brushes in manga studio alone but those, those it's you know, it's just like with regular art. You, it's like the there's the eighty twenty rule in, in most things. Like when it comes to tools and art, it's like the ninety seven three. I do ninety seven percent of my work with a small handful of tools, and then I've got a bunch of other stuff, for really specific instances. And and coloring is almost always like that. Um, focus on being able to use opacity because it will act like real paint. Um, and uh, that's a super important concept. Uh, it'll somewhat act like gouache paint, you know, where as you layer it, it'll get slightly darker and slightly less transparent. That's that's important. But uh, yeah, if you guys have questions or like if you think of offbeat, I, mean, I don't want to say offbeat, but like novel concepts when it comes to coloring and approaching illustration and comic book making, there's just so much content out there that people have already done. I don't really want to be redundant. But I know that I can help you, so please ask questions and I'll make videos to make answers and we'll make 2019 uh, an awesome, awesome year. Uh, next month, a month after that, please follow me either here on YouTube or on Instagram. All my links are below, but I have a creator-owned comic that's coming out. That's actually why I'm doing a couple comic book coloring projects because I, I so much of my work is traditional and it's a, it's a fantasy comic. It's called Queendom. It's going to be... I mean, I think it's really going to be something special. Uh, even if nobody reads it, I think it'll be, it'll just be cool looking. Uh, so yeah, um, follow me and I wish you guys the best of luck. Take care.